أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وأطهر المرسلين شفيع المذنبين وحبيب رب العالمين محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجرفها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هادي أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة All praise is due to Allah I bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is indeed his final messenger The best of speech is the book of Allah the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of all matters is to innovate in religion and every such kind of innovation is misguidance. And misguidance leads to the hellfire. Ya ahbaba Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kharaja unazun ala azaman al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi ghazwatin min al-ghazawat aw kharaja fi dunya hafi. وفي الطريق قابلهم راع ومعه مجموعة من الأغنام والمواشي فقال السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته فردوا عليه السلام ثم لما قطعوا شوطا من المشي قالوا والله ما سلم علينا إلا ابتغاء السلامة لنفسه وإنه من الكفر فعادوا إليه فقتلوه وأخذوا ما معه من المواشي وعادوا بها إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم it was said that a group of people, during the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they set forth out, was it a battlefield or they were roaming around the land, when they met a shepherd with whom he had some cattle. The shepherd saw them and he greeted them saying, Assalamu alaikum, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. They greeted him back, but then when they walked for a while, they said, wait a minute, that man was not a believer. He only greeted us with the greetings of Islam so that he may keep himself safe. But he really did not mean it. He is one of the disbelievers. They went back. They killed him. They took the cattle that he had with him and they brought it back to the Prophet ﷺ. War booty. We got one of them kafirs. Immediately Allah reveals the following verses. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا ضَرَبْتُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَتَبَيَّنُوا وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ أَلْقَى إِلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامَ لَسْتَ مُؤْمِنًا تَبْتَغُونَ عَرَضَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Immediately Allah reveals Qur'an. What does it say in it? It says, O oh, ye who believe, if you set forth for a mission, investigate. And do not say to those who are greeting you with the greetings of peace, you are not believers aspiring the gains of this world. Mahi majal al mujamal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta'arrada li fi'lihim, thumma ta'arrada li niyatihim wa qal tabtahuna arada al hayat al dunya. There is no room for what we call here nowadays you know, to be politically correct. Islam and the Quran was very blunt with the behavior of these people. Said, wait a minute, even though you did it in the name of God, but guess what? Allah tells you why you really did it. Tabtahuna arad al hayat al dunya. You are only aspiring for the gains, for the worldly gains. Meaning that, you know what, get some cattle, some sheep, some camels, some cows here and there. Allah said, this is why you did it. There is nothing godly about killing another believer. Said, there is absolutely nothing godly about it. And that is why throughout the Quran, we are reminded of this concept. Ya ayyuha al-lazina amin, la ta'kulu amwalakum, la ta'kulu amwalakum baynakum bil-batil, illa an takuna tijaratan an-taradim minkum. Are you believed? 
Do not devour your wealth amongst you falsely or wrongly. Do not devour people's money. If it's not yours, it's not yours. Do not try to find loopholes about it. Allah said, except that people give it an taradin. You know what people are from, from themselves, they're giving it. But then also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid and He says, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسِكُمْ And do not kill one another. Meaning amongst the believers, do not kill one another. But why does it start with wealth? Allah said, if you have respect for people's property, then you're going to have respect for people themselves. So Allah said, gradually said, not only do not violate themselves, He said, do not even violate their property. It is not befitting to a Muslim to behave in such a way with anybody, let alone another believer. I could not believe my eyes watching the news nowadays. When the Shias are killing the Sunnis, the Sunnis are killing the Shias, the Hamas are killing the Fatih, the Fatih are killing Hamas people back. And he said, you have to rub your eyes and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are these really Muslims doing this to one another? Are these really the Palestinians, the people for the past 40 years donated money to, they prayed for them, they were so eager in seeing that these people have a state of their own. Is this really what it's coming down to at this point? Muslims killing other Muslims? And the worst part of it, it's all done in the name of Allah. I do not understand the logic behind somebody, a suicide bomber, walking into a Shia mosque and blowing himself and the people around him up. And when you say why? Because they're Shias. Another Shia would do the same stupid thing because they're Sunnis. And everybody is doing it in the name of religion. Quoting Allah, quoting the Prophet ﷺ, quoting Ali, quoting the family of the Prophet ﷺ, so that people may justify their wickedness. Violating and killing other people, and then we say, it was done for the sake of Allah, in the name of Allah. Allah said, that is not the case, people. That is not the case. What is it? Why do people do this? Allah said, تَبْتَغُونَ عَرَضَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنِيَا You do what you do, you violate other people, you kill other people because you are aspiring for this worldly gain. Otherwise, how can you explain a group of believers inside a mosque praying and then somebody will actually walk in and find it correct, Islamically justified that they kill themselves and they kill those who are around them. Islam forbids the destruction not only of mosques, Islam forbids the destruction of churches, of synagogues, of temples. Islam forbids that. Let alone that you walk into a mosque and you destroy the lives of other believers. Ibn Umar gave a hadith on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يقول فيه صعد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى المنبر أو على المنبر ثم قال بصوت رفيع يعني نده على الناس ثم قال لهم يا معشر من قد آمن بلسانه ولم يرد الإيمان إلى قلبه. Ibn Umar said that one time the Prophet peace be upon him he got on his pulpit on the mimbar and with a loud voice he called upon people. And he was very critical of them. And what does he say? يا معشر من قد آمن بلسانه ولم يرد الإيمان إلى قلبه. He said all the group of people who only profess faith with their tongues, but it has not penetrated to their hearts. You say it, but your actions don't show it. You say it, but it has no room in your heart. So the Prophet ﷺ said, you people, listen to me. Listen to what I am about to say. And then what does he say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, لا تؤذوا المسلمين ولا تعيروهم he said, you people listen up. Those who profess faith with their tongues, but it has not penetrated their heart. Listen up, he said, do not harm the believers. La tu'udhu al-Muslimin. Wa la tu'ayyiruhum. Do not belittle them, or do not make mockery of them. Wa la tu'haqqiruhum. And do not look down upon them. Wa la tattabi'u awratihim. And do not follow and investigate after their shortcomings. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ تَتَبَّعَ عَوْرَةَ أَخِيهِ 
Muslim tatabba Allahu awratan. For if you set forth to investigate the shortcomings of other believers, Allah is going to set forth to investigate your own shortcomings. Well, what happens if Allah is investigating your shortcomings? What chance do you have? وَمَنْ تَتَبَّعَ اللَّهُ عَوْرَتَهُ يَفْضَحُ وَلَوْ فِي جَوْ فِي رَحْلِهِ And said, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets forth in investigating and exposing your shortcomings, indeed you will be exposed even though you may be in the middle of your house, Allah is going to expose you. But then Ibn Umar said something interesting. He said also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked into the Kaaba in one of the days. He looked into the Kaaba, the house of Allah, the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam, that was built by Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam, and he looked at it. And what does he say? He said, Ma a'zamak. He said, How great you are! How marvelous you are! This is the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. We have a physical legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He said, Ma a'zamak wa a'zam hurmatak. How awesome you are! And how sacred you are. But then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُ أَعْظَمُ حُرْمَةً عِنَّ اللَّهِ مِنْكِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. But then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, However, a believer is more sacred in the sight of Allah than this building. In the other hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لَزَوَالُ الدُّنْيَا أَهْوَنُ عِنَّ اللَّهِ مِنْ قَتْلِ إِمْرِئِ الْمُسْلِمِ he says for this Kaaba to actually vanish, to be destroyed, he said that is less evil in the sight of Allah than the killing of another believer. The life of a Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that it is actually worse if we are ever given the chance between the destruction of the Kaaba or the life of another Muslim, said save the life of a Muslim and destroy the Kaaba. This is how sacred it is. But you look around, it is the Muslims who are killing the Muslims. It is the believers who are killing the believers, all in the name of Allah. All in the name of this deen. And then we come out and we look at the people and say, Islam is a religion of peace. People will look at you and say, Whom are you kidding? Islam is a religion of peace. Where is the peace that it brought you? Where is the peace in Iraq? Where is the peace in Kashmir? Where is the peace in Somalia? Where is the peace in Sudan? Where is the peace in Palestine? And then we say, but Islam is a religion of peace. Who are we kidding? One man, he came to a soap maker, or he was himself a soap maker. He used to make soap, so, sabun. And he came to one scholar and he said, what good is this religion? He said, what good is it? It tells people about peace, peace, but look into all the violence that is happening in the world today. What good is it? He said, this religion is absolutely no good. The scholar and the sheikh looked at him and he said, sir, what do you do? He said, I'm a soap maker, I make soap. He said, see, religion is like your soap. You can make it, but if people don't use it, it is of no good. Other words, it is not the fault of the soap, that people are filthy. It is not the fault of the soul that people smell. Similarly, he said, it is not the fault of religion that peace is absent. It is the fact that people do not adhere to the religion, that is why there is no peace. Ya Ahbab Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shufi Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ibn Alimuna fa yaqul? Yaqul sibab al-Muslimi fisq wa qitaluhu kufu. He said to curse. To verbally abuse a believer, he said, this is wickedness, outright wickedness. All you have to do is just hear Muslims talking to each other. So sad, sometimes people will be playing sports and they start cursing each other. They will be watching TV together, they start cursing each other. A husband and a wife together in the house, they start calling each other names. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Sibabu al-Muslimi fisq. To curse another believer, to verbally abuse another believer, he said that is wickedness. And then he said, وَقِتَالُهُ كُفْرًا He said to actually fight them, he said that is disbelief. It is as good as rejecting this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi akhir umurihi yusi al-Muslimin, فَمَاذَا يَقُولُ يَقُولُ لَا تَرْجِعُوا بَعْلِي كُفَّارًا 
يَضْرِبُ بَعْضُكُمْ لِقَالُ وَبَعْضُ The Prophet, peace be upon him, towards the end of his life, he's leaving his legacy to the Muslims. What does he say to his fellow believers? He said, people, do not apostate after I am gone. Do not go back to your old ways after I am gone. How do you do this? يَضْرِبُ بَعْضُكُمْ رِقَابَ بَعْضُ That some of you are going to smite the necks of others. Muslims killing Muslims, the Prophet ﷺ said, this is the rejection of this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Ahbaba Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Lamma manna Allah ala al-Mu'minin, Zakkarhum bin'amatayn. Zakkarhum bin'amatayn. Wazkuru iz kuntum a'da'an, Fa'ish? Fa'allaka bayna kulubikum. Tab, hadi al-ni'ma al-mula. Wa al-ni'ma al-taniya, Wa kuntum ala shafa hafratim min al-naa. فَذَكُرْ نِعْمَةَ الْمُؤَاخَى قَبْلَ أَنْ يَذْكُرَ نِعْمَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ The Prophet ﷺ came to a group of people, sectarianism, tribalism was taking place, and what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? It reminds us in Surah Ali Imran about two bounties, two blessings that Allah gave the believers. He said, number one, remember that one day you were the enemies of one another. You were the enemies. But then it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ يا إخواني عبارة أَلَّفَ هذه من أجمل الكلمات إحنا الآن واحد لما يقرأ الكتاب ماذا يقال؟ يقال فلان ألف الكتاب يعني إيش ألف الكتاب؟ يعني كانت هذه الكلمات متبعثرة ومتناثرة فأتى بها صاحبها فألف بين الكتاب أو فألف بين هذه الكلمات فخرجت إلينا في ثوب القشيب المزركش وأصبحت ولا أصبحت تسمى كتاب قال إيش فلان مؤلف يعني ألف بين هذه الكلمات ومنها قال الله سبحانه وتعالى ألف بين قلوبكم It's a beautiful word that this, that this um, the Quran uses the term ألف it is to put harmony amongst people. Allah reminded us of this harmony that He placed between us before He mentions the second bounty, which is the bounty of Islam. See, brothers and sisters, personally, I am not in the public contest. And I know that many people will not, what, will not like what I am about to say. But when you look into this Shia and Sunnah dispute that is taking place, Mainly the motive behind it, it is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Then you do all of this, seeking, only aspiring the worldly gain of this life. That's why you do it. People seeking influence, people seeking positions, people seeking possessions. Whatever it is, there is nothing godly about killing other people. There is absolutely nothing godly about it. And then people are fond of saying, you know, even the Shias are not Muslims. And the Shias will say, you know, even the Sunnahs don't even like the family of the Prophet. And we get into this and it becomes very ridiculous. تَأَمَّلْ مَعِي فِي مَا قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ مَنْ صَلَّى صَلَاتَنَا وَاسْتَقْبَلَ قِبْلَتَنَا وَأَكَلَ ذَبِيحَتَنَا فَهُوَ الْمُسْلِمُ The Prophet said, whoever prays the way that we do, whoever faces the same qibla that we do, Whoever eats the meat that we slaughter, he is the believer. He is the Muslim. He is the Muslim. That's, it. That's the end of it. But we will go on to investigate. If you do not believe exactly as I do, you are doomed. And the minute I say that you are not a believer, it becomes easy to humiliate, to violate your rights. But the Prophet ﷺ was not engaged into this. Even if people may profess Islam just to save themselves, the Prophet ﷺ said, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Usama ibn Zayd one time in one of the battlefields, he's fighting with this man with his sword, and the man ends up dropping his sword, and Usama ibn Zayd corners him. Khalas, he is dead. So the man looks into Usama and says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah When he felt that he's cornered and he's about to be gone, he said, by the way, Usama, I bear witness that nobody is worthy of worship of Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger of Allah. Usama killed him. And he went back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he explained why he did it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَمَا لَا تَفْعَلْ بِلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ What are you going to do about his statement of La ilaha illa Allah? So naturally Usama radiallahu anhu said, but Prophet of Allah, he only said it to save himself. He really did not mean it. 
The Prophet ﷺ said, هَلَّا شَقَقْتَ عَنْ صَبْرِهِ Did you actually open his heart to see whether he meant it or not? مَاذَا تَفْعَلْ بِلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ What are you going to do about لا إله إلا الله? What are you going to do about لا إله إلا الله? فقال أسامة والله تمنيت لو أني أسلمت ذلك اليوم. أسامة said at that point I truly wish that I only became a Muslim that day so that I am not held responsible for what I have done towards this person. See brothers and sisters, Islam came to bring peace to the world. والله the message of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم one of the main objectives of it is to bring peace into the world. They say that the most statement of tolerance is expressed in the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَّةِ The most that you can do to any person when you disagree with them is say what Allah taught us. لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَّةِ To you is your way and to me is my way. To you is your religion, and to me is my religion. Ya akhi, worship the way you want, I worship the way I want. But because we differ, it does not mean that there has to be chaos. Because we differ, it does not mean that innocent lives are to be lost. Because we differ, it does not mean that a thousand Iraqi every single day are displaced of their homes because of the fighting that is happening between the Shias and the Sunnis. People living in peace, coexisting in peace, and then all of the sudden marrying into each other. But right now people remember that he is a Shia and she is a Sunni and, and what have you. And we look into this and then we say, Islam is a religion of peace. Yes it is. But let's be honest. We are not as peaceful as Islam has intended for us to be. We are not as peaceful as Islam has intended for us to be. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا من لهم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وعلى من بآثاره اقتفى All praises due to Allah and may his peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, brothers and sisters, remember this. A Muslim is always a source of peace. Wherever a Muslim is found, you will find somebody that is promoting peace. All the time. This is the job of a Muslim. Promoting peace amongst other Muslims and also peace in the greater society. That is what we ought to be doing. But nowadays, unfortunately, that's not what we are doing. And that is the correct image that people have about us. That what is taking place does not represent Islam. It does not represent genuine, good-hearted, caring Muslims. Interestingly though is, when the Zionists are killing the Palestinians, we want to demonstrate. We want to go to the federal building. We want the U.S. to intervene. We want people to stand up for the Palestinians. But then what happens when the Palestinians are killing each other? What happens to our demonstrations? What happens to our petitions? What happens to the complaints? Where is all of this? As if, if we're killing each other, that's cool. That's okay. But if somebody comes to kill us, then we're going to stand up. Sin. Absolutely childish. Absolutely childish. تأملوا معي رعاكم الله في قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم المؤمن أليف يؤلف ولا خير في من لا يألف ولا يؤلف He said a believer is loving and is lovable and there is no goodness in he who is neither loving nor are they lovable What is the idea? That please remember that as Muslims we are supposed to be a source of peace but also remember that we have other obligations towards our Muslim brothers and sisters تأمل معي في قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم المسلم أخ المسلم لا يخذله ولا يظلمه ولا يحقره said that the believer or Muslim is the brother and sister of any other believing man or woman he said and as such you neither put them now nor do you wrong them nor you nor do you actually give them up to their to their enemies but then also the Prophet ﷺ would forbid certain transactions because they bring animosity amongst people. 
If somebody is engaged to a woman, do not go and propose to that woman. Why is this? Because it is going to bring animosity amongst people. So Islam takes all these precautions so that peace is maintained within our community. So that we can truly be the ideal community for other people to look into and say, we want to be like the Muslims. We want to be like the Muslims. A man became a Muslim and he was addressing the people in the masjid and he said, Alhamdulillah, I became a Muslim despite people like you. He said, I am grateful that I became a Muslim even though the representation of Islam are people like you. He said, I am grateful to Allah that I knew about Islam before I knew about the Muslims. We cheat each other. We despise each other. We are more tolerant towards other people than we are tolerant within our own group. And that is just absolutely not acceptable. Brothers and sisters, remember, Islam respects all lives. Indeed, we have honored all the children of Adam, all the children of Adam, Muslims, non-Muslims, gays, straight, you just name it, all the children of Adam are honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One time Ali ibn Abi Talib was walking and he heard a man abusing somebody else. What does he say? He says, Ya hadha, fa'innahu wa illam yakun musliman, fa'innahu nazeeruka fil khalq. He's verbally abusing him and Ali ibn Abi Talib doesn't know the other man. But he made a very precautionary, beautiful statement. He said, wait a minute, even if he is not a Muslim, because sometimes we think that somebody, because they're not Muslims, they ought to be abused. He said, even if he is not a Muslim, he is your equal in humanity. Islam gives this to people. Every single human being is a holder of human dignity and integrity. Man, woman, young, old, poor, rich, white, black, anything. By the end of the day, Islam says that every single human being is a holder of human dignity and integrity. Let's have respect for one another. Let's make peace in our own homes. Let us stop abusing our spouses, a wife abusing her husband or a husband abusing his wife. Let's be good to our children. Let's not belittle our fellow people in the masjid or outside the masjid. People tell me that, you know, I don't like to come to the masjid because all what people do in the masjid is that they just gossip. They'll be talking about other people. Said, I do not want to come to the masjid. It seems like every time I come to the masjid, my sins are increasing. So I decided I'm not going to come to the masjid anymore. Let's create more peaceful homes. More peaceful masjid where everybody and anybody is welcome. اللهم يا رب إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم يا رب إن نسألك السلم والسلام والأمن والإيمان في جميع بلاد المسلمين اللهم يا رب الأمن والإيمان في جميع بلاد المسلمين اللهم يا رب آمن المسلمين في العراق وفي فلسطين وفي كشمير وفي الشيشان وفي أفغانستان وفي كل مكان يا رحم الرحمين اللهم يا رب رحم موتانا واشف مرضانا وفك أسرانا وعاف مبتلانا اللهم يا رب فرج هم المهمومين ونفس كرب المقبوبين واقضي الدين عن المدينين اللهم يا رب إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم يا رب إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم يا رب إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم يا رب طهر قلوبنا وحصن فروجنا واختم بالصالحات الباقيات آجالنا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإنتاء القربة وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي عظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم